All right. Brother Christian, you get out all those prayer sheets? Good. All right. Okay, grab your Bible. Let's go to Romans in chapter 13 tonight. Romans in chapter 13. All right, Romans chapter 13. We're going to read the first uh, seven verses of this chapter. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Let's, let's pray. Father, come to you tonight. The Lord needs your help. Um, Father, I pray that you'd guide and help us tonight. Uh, Lord, uh, this uh, study, I pray that, uh, Lord, it just be something that would be um, needful. Lord, help us to incorporate it into our hearts and minds. And Father, just do a work. I ask song in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, by the way, I did want to mention Orville Knapp is 100 years old in the nursing home there in uh, in Arizona. And so uh, forgive me, I was thinking Alana. Alana passed away here several months ago, but Orville's still trucking along. And so he is weakening and fading, but uh, still still alive. And so forgive me for uh, saying that he was in heaven. And so I apologize for that. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about the topic of authority. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Authority is a difficult topic for all of us. Amen. We all have a tendency to not like authority. Has anybody, is there, anybody ever had a problem with authority? Okay. No? Delta, Stanford. Put your hand up high. All right, I taught Delta in school. And I felt like she had a problem from time to time. <laughs> I'm teasing her, I'm teasing. We've all had problems with authority. All right, we, we've all dealt with this. And folks, the Bible talks an awful lot about it. And uh, it's something, um, living in our present day, I think we need to have a biblical grasp of the topic. I, I really do. I think it's very, very important um, that we, we understand things biblically. If not, um, we tend to, um, well, we tend to be our own gods, uh, choosing good and evil. And uh, that's not my place. I'm not, I'm not in the place of God. I'm not. And so uh, it's a difficult topic for us. Um, by the way, we all have a tendency uh, to pick our own authorities depending on our agreement with them. You ever notice that? Now, by the way, I will say there are times where we have that luxury. There are some moments in life where we, we have the right to kind of pick our own authority, and that's, that's good, um, but there are many times where we simply do not have any right, and we have to deal with the authorities that are over us. Um, by the way, saying that I always get to pick my authorities is not a biblical model of, of, of authority or philosophy. Um, we must understand authority is a biblical principle and a biblical topic. Uh, let me see. If you've got your Bibles, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 22. We'll come, we'll, we're going to come back to Romans here, but I want you to go to Matthew chapter 22. And uh, inside the heart of every person in this room lies a little anarchist, right? Okay. The seed of rebellion is alive and well in all of us. Some more so than others, okay? But there's a little part of us that just kind of wants to be like, you can't tell me what to do. We're, the, we're, that, we're that bratty little four-year-old that like, no, you know? And uh, there's a part of us that's that, that we all, we, we have to be careful of that. We have to be very careful of that. That's, that's of the flesh. But uh, Matthew chapter 22 and verse uh, 21, um, you know, let's go a couple, couple verses before that. Um, let's go to verse 17. By the way, verse, let's, let's go to 15. It's just a fun passage. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him, Jesus, in his talk. And they sent out uh, unto him their disciples with Herodians, saying, Master, 
we know that thou art true and teach us the way of God and truth. All right, when they, when they flatter you, when the world comes to you, Christian, and flatters you, be ready for a doozy. All right, they're coming at you. Here they are, they're flattering Jesus with the Herodians. And, oh, Jesus, we, we know you're a wonderful man and you love truth. And boy, just, just help us out here. And you don't, and neither care us out for any person, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness. And said, why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, whose? Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things that are, which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him. And went their way. He answered, of course, perfectly because he is the Son of God. What Jesus is implying here, and we're going to go back to Romans 13 in a moment, is there are things that he has delegated to Caesar. He has. There is such a thing as human authority. Now, we as good Christians say there's only one authority, and he's God, and I'll choose when and how and where I obey anybody else. But that is not biblical. And so as we sit back and we look at this topic a little bit and kind of work our way around, and it may take us a couple of weeks, we'll see. All right, I know some of you just automatically get this and it's not a problem at all. Paul right? No, no, I'm te- but, but as we look at this, I want us to be biblical in our approach. I want us to understand from a biblical perspective how this is to be administered. Because, folks, I'll be honest, there are times when we're not going to obey some, authority, some authority, human authorities. How do we do that and be scripturally right? Right? So, if I, again, if I become the authority and I choose what authorities I'm going to follow, then I'm God. I'm not God and I don't want to go there. So I need to, be, I need to make sure that I have a biblical mindset of that. And so, I, but I do want, to, I want you to see this here. Jesus said there are things that are Caesar's and we are to render to Caesar that which is Caesar's and to God that which is God's. So there's some things that are clearly God's or some things that are clearly Caesar's and we ought to render due benevolence to them where that is deemed necessary. And so with, with that understanding, uh, let's go back to Romans in chapter 13. Um, by the way, um, we are all tonight under authority. Tonight, um, we're under legal and civil authority, are we not? Okay, we have, we have rulers. We don't have a king, so to speak, though some of them seem to think they are. Um, but, but we are not under a king tonight. We're, we're under uh, elected leadership. We are very unique, by the way, something very different than the rest of the world, honestly, by and large, has ever known. Our form of government, while it's very familiar to us, the rest of the world doesn't comprehend it, all right? Electing your own leaders, that just that just blows the mind of a vast majority of the world. Um, and, and honestly, you start to, you know, we talk about rigged elections and stolen elections. Folks, most of the world, that's how they live, okay? <laughs> the election's over before it began, and it just is what it is, and you deal with it and go on, or you get shot, and so you just live with it and go on, all right? Honor, you know, yeah. You can make light of this stuff, but um, a republic, a democracy, these are these are unusual things. And of course, we've had a great impact worldwide and so on and so forth. But tonight we're under legal authority. We're under civil authority. I, I can go out tonight and um, I can I can get myself arrested. Okay, that's not my goal. It's not my purpose, but it very well could happen, all right? Um, uh, tonight we have we have uh, familial authority, all right? There, there's family authority. There's authority within the home, all right? By the way, that's God-ordained. All right. Um, there's church authority. All right. There's 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 a, an order, a structure within the church family. There's there's the authority of the believer, and I think we could throw out some other ones as well. But but need, needless to say, tonight we are all under authority. Everybody in this room, regardless of your rank, regardless of your gender, regardless of your status, you are under some form of authority, and always will be. I'm um, quite honestly, I I personally believe that the the higher that we that we rise on the ladder, I think the more authority, so to speak, that we actually have to yield to. I think that's something that you comprehend because Jesus taught us that the greatest of all was the what? The least or the servant, not the ruler. And if you understand uh, leadership correctly, we are to be servant leaders, and a servant leader answers to those that they serve. And so when we comprehend that, we... The higher you get, the more influence you have, the more you serve. 
And so some of you tonight who are seeking authority and leadership, you might not want to because that means you're going to have to serve more. And so just throwing something out there at you that may or may not land. But um, just, just something I want to jump into. So Romans chapter 13, let's go there, all right? Romans chapter 13, let's just kind of walk through this a little bit. Take a little bit of time. If you, if you have questions or comments, um, feel free to throw them at me. I probably won't answer them, but feel free. Amen? Okay. Romans 13, verse 1 says, Let every soul be what? Subject. What does that word mean? Under. Okay. Okay. Obedient. Submissive. Let every soul be subject unto what? The higher powers. For there is no power of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. Let's start out with this tonight. We are to be subject to authority. We are to be subject to authority. Is it? We see that? So tonight, I am to be subject to the authorities in my life. Okay, I, I work a job. Okay, go in every day, I punch the clock. I have a boss. Okay? He's my authority in that area, is he not? Yes, all right? Um, children in the home, they are under the authority of the mother and the father. By the way, wives, you're commanded to be in submission to your own husbands. And by the way, some ladies hate that. They hate that concept. You picked that guy, all right? That's one of those leaders you get to pick. You picked him, okay? All right? So understand that. You know, I know some women are like, he can't tell me what to do. I know. He knows that, all right? You've made, I'm teasing, all right? But, but as we step back, we are to be subject to the higher powers. The highest power is God, but this is not necessarily referring to him. He, it's just talking about the higher authorities, right? the higher powers, and the higher powers are ordained of God. So God ordained authority. God set it up, and he tells us that we are to be subject to that. Um, so let's just be very simple. All right, does that mean I am to be obedient? By nature, we are to be obedient people, submissive people. We are to have that type of spirit. You say, well, that's not the way that I am. I do know that, all right? I, I'm as fleshly as you are, and when I get told to do something I don't like to do, or I get told so something that I like to do by somebody I don't like. Right? Just come, okay, come, let's just be honest, okay? I have a tendency to say, I'm not subject to you, or I'm not subject to that, all right? You ever worked for a boss that you couldn't stand? Yep. And did you ever go out of your way to spite them just because you could? Yes, you did. All right. No, I always was a wonderful. No, come on now. All right. It's human nature. And so we, we have to step back. And we have to examine this. All right. So number one, we are to be subject to the authorities. All right. I feel like this is a topic that you don't appreciate very much. Okay. You just feel like talk about something else. Better. Talk about Christmas. Christmas is coming. We want to talk about Christmas. No, folks, in the light of current climate, I really believe we have to get so the, the political and social climate, we have to have a biblical understanding. Because if I am going to stand up to authority and defy it, I better make sure God's on my side. And I'm afraid that many of us like to be rebellious to authority, but God is not on my side. Okay? By the way, the word rebellion, all right, in our Bible, it means an open resistance to lawful authority. An open resistance to lawful authority. Um, an insurrection, okay, um, just by the definition of the word, an insurrection is not necessarily um, a continual open resistance to a lawful authority. It, an insurrection is, is open resistance to one area, saying this is not just or this is not right. We're not defying the, the king or the mandate. We are just, this one area is wrong. And so insurrection is a part of a rebellion, but a rebellion is not always insurrection, so on and so forth. If you, if you step back and consider that, rebellion is a far stronger term, okay? And so when you understand that, so when the Bible says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, it's condemning rebellion. There are times and there are places when stands must be taken and should be taken, but we have to understand biblically, properly, how to do that so that I know that I am standing next to the Lord. And folks, if there's anything you and I need today in our current political climate, I need God at my side. Or I need to be at God's side, however you'd prefer to word that. So number one, we are to be subject to authority. Number two, okay, we see this here right here in Romans in chapter number 13, or authority is ordained by God. Yes? Authority is ordained by God. I struggle with this. 
But that means God sometimes allows unjust rulers. And I'm not necessarily talking about <laughs> Tony Evers, okay? But God allowed Nebuchadnezzar. He allowed Cyrus. He allowed Caesar. Well, I don't like them. Me neither. They were ungodly men. All of them. Okay, we, we sometimes think Nebuchadnezzar was a nice guy because he, you know, we read the book of Daniel and, you know, he kind of came around. <laughs> read Nebuchadnezzar. He was not a nice person. Read what history says about him. Yes, he did come around and praise God. The gospel can reach anybody. That's how big our God is. But Nebuchadnezzar, you would not have liked him as your king or president or governor. <laughs> All right, you just would not have liked him. All right, folks, when you get into these things, you, you get, get into some areas where you say, well, well, I don't like that ungodly authority. By the way, when you begin to do that, do you know what all authority becomes? Ungodly. You say, well, what do you mean by that? Okay. Ladies, you may be married to a Christian man, but he does not always act like a Christian. Okay. The police officer, officer might be a Christian, okay, but that doesn't mean he always acts like a Christian. The representative to Congress or the senator in Congress may be a Christian. It doesn't mean he always acts like a Christian. When I understand that, I can execute and eliminate any authority in my life. Kids, look at mom and dad and say, well, mom and dad aren't perfect. They're 100% right. 100% right. They're not perfect. They will make more mistakes than they care to admit. That is true. They're going to be ungodly at times. But all authority is ordained by God. Is, is that not what the scriptures teach? So number one, we are to be subject to authority. Number two, authority is ordained by God. By the way, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Praise God, all right? So all power comes through Christ, all right? So we understand that. By the way, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40, it says, let all things be done decently and in order. God is for structure. God is for leadership. God is for authority. I, I know that that we all think that, well, I'm my own boss. Nobody can tell me what to do. I have the priesthood of the believer. Nobody else, I'm in charge of me. Nobody else can tell me what to do. That is not a biblical model. It's not. We are to do things decently. Or God ordained structure in the home. He ordained structure in government. He ordained structure in the church. He ordained, God did that. There's a principle. God is a God of order. He's not a God of disorder. Okay? So you got to understand. You say, well, well Pastor, I, I don't like when people tell me what to do. Uh, me too. Okay? You want to offend a man? Lord over him. Right? I imagine it works the same way for ladies. <laughs> All right? Just doesn't work that. But, but by nature, we struggle with that. So number one, we are subject to authority. Number two, all, our, all authority is ordained by God. Now let's keep going. Verse two says, whosoever therefore, okay, based on what, what we just read in verse one, on every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now, whoever resists, protests, uh, undermines, rebels against authority is resisting God. That's what it says, doesn't it? I'm not, I'm not making this up. Now, now we're going to talk about some things here, again, about taking a stand and sometimes taking a stand against some authorities and so on and so forth, but there's a principle here. God says, when you're rebelling against authority, you're rebelling against my ordinance. You're rebelling against me. Okay? Um, here's one of the things that happens. Let's just use the home, for example. All right? So dad says, got to go to bed at 9 o'clock. All right? Mom disagrees with him in her heart and doesn't say anything. Dad's gone for the day, and he gets home late. He's coming home late from work, and the kid gets home, and it's 930, and the kids are still up. Father is the head of the home. Correct? This Bible teaches. All right? But the wife says, I don't agree with his rules. So I will allow my children to do what I think is best because he's not here right now. That's wrong. It's wrong. Not, <laughs> some of you husbands are like, well, I'm going to set my wife up. Don't set her up for that. All right? But, but listen to me. Whosoever resists authority resists the ordinance of God. We have a tendency, okay, listen, we have a tendency to undermine authority to set up our own little kingdoms. 
It's human nature. I know better than your father. Okay? We'll deal, you, know, you get teenagers in the home, you're going to deal with authorities in your kids' lives that will know better than the parents. By the way, this is what's happened in the public education system in our country. The public education system has said, we know better than mom and dad. We don't need to tell them what's going on. They've undermined the home's authority. The problem is it's undermined the child's obedience. And so we, we've, cre we've encouraged, we've not created anarchists, that's the sinful nature. We've encouraged it. We, we've pushed it forward. And we wonder why rebellion is just, folks, rebellion since the, 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 the 60s and 70s has just exploded exponentially in our country, has it not? I mean, look at the culture. We, we are rebelling against gender. We're rebelling against science today. You, you, you do understand that. I mean, we are literally looking at, at what is science, the God of science, and we're saying we don't care anymore. We can be whatever we want to be. It doesn't matter. Well, for 20 years as I grew up, through teenage and young adult years, it was science, science, science. And science was wrong. It was oppositions of science falsely so called, like Paul called it in 1 Timothy chapter 6. But, but understand something. We are rebelling against our own nature. I mean, it's insanity what's going on. We've trained and encouraged and promoted rebellion. And Christian, the problem is it's, it's infiltrated the church, it's infiltrated our homes, and we've got to deal with it, and we've got to understand this from a biblical perspective. So number one, I said we are subject to authority. Number two, authority is ordained by God. Number three, whosoever resists authority resists the ordinance of God. All right? Now let's con con continue on. There's, there's some qualifiers here. All right? The Bible says this. Verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but what? To the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power to do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same? For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, and revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Okay? Um, wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Now, there's more about that in First Peter. And we'll, we'll look at that uh, in, in a bit here, verse number five. But I, I want to say this. Authority is to promote good as God defined good and to punish evil as God defines evil. Okay, these verses help us to understand something about authority. These authorities that are ordained by God are not going to be perfect authorities. Correct? There's no husband that's going to be a perfect leader in the home. There's not going to be husband and wife who are perfect parents, or mom and dad who are perfect parents. There's not going to be a pastor who's a perfect pastor. There's not going to be a president who's a perfect president, and everything in between and all around. There's no, there's no such thing as a perfect human authority. We, we understand that. I think if we're being honest, we can, we can come to that conclusion. Okay? But authority, generally speaking, is to promote good as God defines good and to punish evil as God defines evil. Now, I'll be very honest with you. When our country was founded, that was pretty much the basis of our legal system. We tried to punish evil as God defined evil. Um, I think today we saw the Senate vote and redefine marriage. Am I, am, I, am I right in saying that? Which is tragic. I think 62 senators, 12 Republicans voted for that. And just vulgar. But here's what they did. They said, God, you are wrong and we are right. Now, th there's an issue with that. We're, we're, we're treading on some, some problematic ground. They took some steps they ought not to take because they have redefined what God called good and now they've called it evil and they've called evil good. So this is a problem. So well, what do we do, Pastor, when the authorities go against God? Well, that's a good question, all right? But I do want to say this, okay, authority. So in the home, okay, in the school, in, in, in the church, in the community, authority is to promote good as God defines good. And to punish evil as God defines evil. So this is important. In your home, authorities, this is what we do. We define it not by my principles. By my, okay? I have a tendency to be pretty uh, prideful. Okay? I think I know best. Does anybody identify with that tonight? Okay, I really do. I think I know best. You're like that too. Okay? You may say it differently than I say it because you're more spiritual than I am. But you have a tendency to think, now, I cannot define things my way. Well, I say, well, well, I, I know best in this area. No, you really don't. God always knows best. God is always right. Even if the culture, even if the church, even if the home disagrees, God is always right. That's the end of the conversation. Let God be true and every man a liar. So, okay, authority is to promote good as God defines good, to punish evil as God defines evil. Now, 
Let me just throw this point in here, and then we're going to move off a little bit. We'll run out of time quickly tonight. All right. Um, verse number six, the Bible says this. Um, for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, a fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. I want to make this point. I think this is very important. Authority is to be appreciated and honored. Authority is to be appreciated and honored. We have done the exact opposite in our culture, in our homes, and even in our churches in the last 40 years. We tear down authority and we dishonor authority. Okay? In the culture, you look at what's happened to fathers. Our culture, for 40 years, has made fun of dads. From Married with Children to The Simpsons and you name every other sitcom, we have mocked fatherhood. We went from Father Knows Best and the Andy Griffith, Griffith Show to that garbage. And we have only gotten worse. In fact, today, the father's literally out of the home. That's the sitcoms. Dad isn't involved, all right? He's absent. He's gone. And we don't want daddy there anymore. We have defamed the fathers and destroyed them. And it's had a horrible impact on our culture. Uh, 2018, for the first time in American history, more babies were born to unwed mothers than were born to wed mothers. We have destroyed fatherhood in the United States of America. Why? And I believe this with all of my heart, because Satan said, I want to destroy authority. The first authority that a child will ever understand is the face of their father. A father, compared to the mother, is annoyed when his child cries. Okay? A mother goes over and, oh, poor little the dad says, let him cry. Shut the door. Okay? Now, that's not always, but generally speaking, a father is a little bit more uh, abrasive. I don't know what the word is, but authoritarian, okay? There's a, there's a spirit of authority there. And, and, and dads, I'm not saying you ought to do that, all right? But it won't hurt them to cry a little bit. It's good for them on occasion, all right? Cry it out. I think I did that till about the age of 10. So thank God, all right, I needed it. So, um, but folks, authority is to be appreciated and honored. That, that's what verses 6 and 7 are telling us. It's telling us to render honor to whom honor is due. You say, well, I, I, don't, I don't like, I don't like. It breaks my heart to watch our children look at their dads. It, it does. Our kids talk horrible about their fathers. I'm not saying every family, but, but, but honestly, it's horrible. It's a distress. Okay, moms, teach your children to honor their father. Yes? Honor thy father and thy mother. Yes? Honor thy father. It starts with dad. Honor thy father. It says, and ye fathers provoke. It, it, there's a lot of emphasis on dad. So, so honor their father. Moms, honor dad. Honor dad. Okay, listen to me. In our culture, we need to respect our leaders. You say, well, it's, it's, it's absolutely impossible to do you have the ability to respect some of the leaders that God's blessed you with. Okay, my boss is a jerk. Please stop. Please stop. Okay, have you ever considered that you might be one too? Just, just a question, all right? Okay, if you're self-employed and work for yourself, I don't know what to tell you, okay? All right, your boss is a jerk. Okay, <laughs> I don't know, all right? But, 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 but stop and consider this. We, look, look at the 24-hour news media. Whichever channel you watch... Okay, and I hope it wouldn't be some of the, the liberal ones. But what do they do? They tear down authority. They do. Okay, that's all they do. Regardless of what end of the spectrum you're on. Now, some of it needs to be said. But boy, do we say it a lot. We have a horrible opinion of every leader in this country. We do. Why? So we just tear it down, 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 tear it down. There are no more heroes. There are no more great men. There are, we tear them down. We destroy them. We've, we've almost uh, made, made it like a, a national hobby to just see what we can destroy. And it's really affecting us in a negative manner. It really is. And I'm afraid that if we're not careful, we, we almost feel um, excited when an authority is destroyed. How awful. That mentality is terrible, all right? And, and so I, I just, I beg you, the Bible's teaching us, hey, okay, there are people in your life that are authorities. Honor them, okay? Give custom to them, give tribute to them, give them their dues. 
That's what the scripture is teaching us. Is it, it, folks, again, if I'm making something up here, I, I'd be happy to have you point it out. But I, I, I'm afraid what's happened is we have just destroyed, hey, we destroyed hey, in the school system. All right. And this has been happening a lot longer than, than, than 40 years. All right. When I was a kid, if I got if I got a detention slip, and I didn't get many, thank the Lord. I, I was I was terrible at home, but fairly intelligent at school. All right. I didn't I didn't constantly get into trouble. All right. But if I came home with a detention slip, I got spanked. Then they asked what happened. <laughs> All right? Do you know what happens today? The teacher's wrong. Have you worked with your kid? Holy smokes. They're exhausting. I'm speaking about my own children. I got three of them. But little Johnny would never do that. No, he did. He, he didn't mean to swear. Yes, he did. He didn't mean to hit that kid. He was being bullied. He's 50 pounds heavier. He felt misunderstood. Mm. <laughs> okay, but what we've done is we've attacked the teachers. And it's true. You ask any teacher in the public school system, they have no authority. It's been shredded and ripped away from them. Why? Parents have said, my little Johnny... He'll answer to me. He'll not answer to you. Well, congratulations. You have just destroyed the ability for them to have influence over them. Because I've watched it with Sunday school teachers, all right? Um, my child can't sit there. It's a bench. <laughs> Every seat is the same. Um, well, the sun comes up, you know, on that side of the room, and it really affects them. So they need to sit four feet over. Oh, okay. You say, Pastor, that's absurd. I know. But that's what happens. And it, the, the, the child can't be wrong. It has to be the teacher. The teacher is the authority. Okay, I remember, honestly, when Dad, when my babysitters, I was known for tormenting babysitters, all right? Miss Paula, God brought her back here, and I think it was a form of punishment. Um, I really do, Paula. Because um, Paula got me a lot of spankings, and she swears she didn't, all right? But there was some bitterness I needed to let go of, Paula. And when God moved you back from Puerto Rico, I had to deal with that. But Dad would always tell me this. He'd say, son, and he told me this every time, but he'd say, Andy, he said, when Paula tells you to jump, you jump first and then ask how high. Now, I didn't truly comprehend that because I thought, Dad, that's really impossible. You know, because I jumped already. I can't say how high. It's too late, you know. Um, I never said that to him because I wasn't that dumb, okay. The principle he was making is that authority is to be obeyed and to be honored and respected. Period. Okay. That'd be a wonderful starting spot for all of us to get to. You say, well, Pastor, what about the wicked authorities? We'll deal with that. And by the way, I'll, I'll, we're running out of time. But Acts chapter 5, if you get a chance, read Acts chapter 5, verse 27 and 28. And we're going to get into that next week, all right? So this whole thing was a teaser for next week's Bible study. So you have to come back. No, two weeks, two weeks. Next week is a praise and testimony service. I'm going to leave you hanging, all right? I really am. But, but folks, I, what I would bet you say, well, Pastor, I, I feel like we need to get that other side. I will be honest. I think that's our problem. I want to learn how to rebel and be okay with God. When I should say, God, I want to obey and be right with God. That should be our focus. Should. Let, look here. Folks, let's be honest. How many of you have been forced to do something unbiblical or ungodly in the last, let's say, 60 days? Is there anybody in this room? Leo, you've been forced to do something unbiblical or ungodly? Leo's raising his hand and looking at Lois. I, I'm not sure. She's not your authority, brother, all right? She just thinks she is. Sure. But brother, you didn't have to submit to that authority. Okay, is there anybody that was you had to to do something that was scripturally or morally wrong? Okay, me neither. Me neither. Now I've had to deal with some ungodly leaders and some ungodly authority, but they've not made me do anything that is biblically wrong. I've not had to defy or deny God. I've not. So it seems to me that the vast majority of the time, it's not about 
taking a stand against the ungodliness of the day, it seems to me that our problem is we don't deal with authority properly. Folks, okay, let's, and I'm, I'm going long here, but I think it's worth it. Okay, um, look at our kids. Do my kids need to learn how to be rebels? Or do they need to learn how to be obedient to the authority that God has put in their life? I think they need to learn how to be obedient. I do. Well, if you just teach them to be yes, man, I'm not doing that at all. Folks, I'm teaching them, I, I want them to be obedient, okay? I want them to say, wait, wait, okay. that adultery is a sin against God. I don't want them to grow up with the mentality, if it feels good, do it. My God is my belly. I want to do whatever I want to do, and you can't tell me. What, 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 hold, what, hold, slow down. Well, they have a point. You know, some the teacher's not always consistent. Welcome to being a human being. Honestly, I'm amazed. That, you know, I, just, I just wish they'd be consistent. <laughs> Come on. Have you ever tried to be perfect? Because you failed. We do these things and we justify wicked behavior. And we encourage the sin of rebellion and disobedience and say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. Go ahead, Jim. What do you got? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's wrong. It's wrong. Jim, and we're going to talk about this in a couple of weeks. Did he tell when to... Did he tell you to put one over your house? Nope. Do you have the right to serve your God the way you see fit? Now, he's wrong, and he, we need to vote that guy out. I am not saying we ought to support ungodliness and say, oh, he's a wonderful man. I'm not saying it at all. We need to call sin, sin. I'm not saying that whatsoever. We need to call that out. But in the same sense, sometimes... We, we, we talk about these things that are 90 miles away or 16 hours away in Washington. And, and again, I'm against sin. I hate sin. But what I, what I believe we've done is we've taught a spirit of rebellion. And if our culture has taught us this. I, I don't want to say we have taught this, but the culture has taught us this. We fought into it. And so we're just a bunch of radicals that are just ready to rebel against anything. Just let me tell you. Well, all of a sudden now, listen, okay. Now I'm telling my mom and dad they can't have any right to tell me what to do. I'm telling my, my school teacher, my Sunday school teacher, you can't tell me what to do. I'm telling my pastor and my youth pastor, you can't tell me what to do. I'm eliminating authorities left and right, and I'm indignant, and I'm entitled, and that's the way it is. I'm my own boss. I'm my own God. Shut your mouth, and Satan's got you. Very. By the way, okay, what I'm saying there really appeals to the flesh. It feels so good to tell an authority to hit the man. Honestly, doesn't it? I mean, just bless God, get up. I know. I got the same flesh you got. My boss is an idiot, and I really told him so. <laughs> yeah, you may be right. Okay? But but here's, here's our problem, is we really pride ourselves on that. When what we should be rejoicing in is our obedience to the authority in our life. I want my kids to obey mom and dad. I want my daughters to son to obey me and be happy with that. Don't raise your hand. You ever have rebellious teenagers in the home? Does that make for a happy place? Oh, man, it's hell on earth. Honestly, it's just exhausting. It's horrible. Husbands and wives, wives, you, 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 don't raise your hand again. But husbands, when you and your wife aren't on the same page and she is just fighting you at every turn and going out of her way to destroy your authority and leadership with your kids, and just honestly, almost, doesn't it make it awful? It's just the tension is, I mean, it's just like, oh my heavens, I don't want to live this. Okay. We should be teaching that, that obedience, obedience to authority. Uh, folks, I honestly don't know... It, there, there, uh, that's not true. There may be a few times our culture has tried to tell us to do something unbiblical, all right, and, and actually tried to mandate it. We, we dealt with that with COVID, and we'll use that as an illustration in a couple weeks. 
but I can honestly say 99.99% of my life, I've never been asked to do anything which is made to do anything that is unscriptural or ungodly. I'm not. I've put myself in some bad situations with some wicked people and some wicked friends, but that was peer pressure. That wasn't authority. If I let them do that, that, that was my fault. Okay, I allowed their peer pressure to, to, to make me do it, but they weren't my authority. I can honestly look at you and say I, I, I'm very blessed that way. And so I think the vast majority of the time we need to put the emphasis on obedience and submission to authority rather than on rebellion. We love to talk about that. It's exciting. It's exhilarating. It's, the problem is it really is not the right focus. And so as a parent, as a husband, as a pastor, we need to practice being subject to authority. I'm subject to authority. Okay? Folks, come on. Look at, look at the movement in our country against police. Defund the police. Why? Because we disagreed with one thing one officer did. We've made a hero of a criminal. I don't care what his skin color is. Honestly, that's what we did. We glorified a reprobate who was breaking the law. He's a hero. We're, we're putting statues of him up. How do you reconcile that? Well, one police officer did. Okay, what, what about the rest of them who do a pretty good job most of the time? I hate cops. It's because you're breaking the law. You know, my favorite comment, go arrest a real criminal. They would if you'd stop breaking the law. Right? And so, folks, I just, we get into these things, and I, I, I just think our focus tends to be on the wrong aspect of it. We need to get back to authority is of God. It is. We're to be subject to the authority. And so we'll, we'll talk about the flip side of that here in a couple weeks. But let's go ahead. Brother Christian, get those prayer request sheets. If you got one.